Hello guys, welcome to AeroBuddy, where we try to make aircraft performance concepts as interesting and as fun as possible. So today we're going to be talking about the translational aircraft equations of motion. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take advantage of this opportunity to define and explain certain angles and axes which are oftentimes confused and oftentimes uh, not known about altogether. So let's get started right away. We have the horizontal axis, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a line parallel to the ground. We have our velocity vector. So if you imagine for argument's sake that the CG of the plane is at the intersection of these three lines, we're going to have the CG moving along this line denoted by the velocity vector. Now, it is a common misconception or, I guess, more of a simplification that because the nose is tilted up this much by this angle, that the velocity vector is also going to, going to be aligned with that, which by design uh, is often true, but however, in a general sense, doesn't have to be true. So since we're after uh, driving sort of a more general set of equations of motion, we're going to assume that there is a slight offset or angle between the velocity vector and the fuselage reference line or FRL, which is basically just a line going through the center of the fuselage. So now that we have our three axes sort of defined and explained. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the angle. So we have our angle theta here, which is the climb angle. And that angle is defined to be the angle between the horizontal and the velocity vector. Moving on to alpha ref, that is going to be the angle of attack of the airplane. And that is defined to be the angle between the velocity vector and the fuselage reference line. Now, the reason why I chose to label this as alpha ref and not alpha is because I didn't want it to get confused with maybe the angle of attack of the wing, which could be different uh, than the aircraft angle of, uh, of attack if there is an incidence angle on the wing, which basically just means that the wing is going to have a slight offset upward from the FRL. You can see right now that it's lined up with it. so. If there is an incidence angle, then the alpha of the wing and the alpha of the uh, entire airplane are not equal. But if there's no incidence angle, then they are. So, uh, pretty common uh, misunderstanding there. Uh, now let's go over here where we have uh, the thrust angle denoted by epsilon, which is going to be a, a, an offset or an angle from the FRL to the thrust vector. Now again, by design, this is usually not the case, but uh, in terms of deriving sort of a general set of equations of motion, we want to make sure that we include uh, sort of all possibilities because it's very easy to then say, okay, if these angles are zero, then what do I have? Rather than trying to uh, start with simplifications from the start and then deriving certain equations of motion and not being able to go back the other way, it's a lot more difficult. So now, we can go ahead and get started with a free body diagram. So we are going to go ahead and draw this here. Get my protractor. Here we go. So we have our weight going straight down. And uh, let's just define our axes before we do anything else. So let's uh, go ahead and define this to be, again, the velocity vector, right? And that's gonna be offset by an angle, uh, which is gonna be the climb angle. I'm gonna use the same colors to just keep things consistent. Hopefully a little easier to read. Um, okay, so now we are going to take our x-axis to be along the direction of the velocity vector and our z-axis to be in the direction of well just perpendicular to to the x right so perpendicular to the velocity vector so now let's draw our other forces from aerodynamics we know that the drag is parallel to the velocity vector so we're gonna go ahead and draw that little offset from the velocity vector so it's kinda easy to see but they are uh, parallel we have our lift vector which let's try to get something relatively perpendicular here here we go 
uh, that is going to be perpendicular to the drag. And finally, we have our thrust vector, which we're going to draw like this. And we know from the previous diagram, if we bring it over here, uh, we know that the in terms of the thrust, it's offset from the velocity vector by an angle alpha ref plus the epsilon, given that uh, there is an offset here from the FRL to the thrust vector. So that's going to be an angle. Let me just draw that with this. So it's going to be alpha ref plus epsilon. And we're going to have our thrust here. So now we can go ahead and derive our equations of motion by summing up the forces in the x and the z direction. So let's go ahead and do that. So before we do that, actually, let's uh, go ahead and draw this. I want to make sure that we know that this is theta as well because we're going to need that. Okay, now we should be good to go. So let's start off with the sum of the forces in the x direction. So that's going to equal, let's start off with the thrust. So we have thrust cosine alpha ref plus epsilon. All right, and let's see, we have minus drag and the lift is perfectly perpendicular to that so we're not going to add it uh, in this uh, in this equation and we also have a weight component so looking at here we have this is opposite of the angle so we know it's going to be sine it's going to the left so we know it's going to be negative so it's going to be minus weight sine theta okay we're going to do the same thing for the z direction so we have thrust sine alpha ref plus epsilon plus the lift drag we're not going to include because again it's uh, perfectly perpendicular and uh, we're going to have a downward component of the weight and we have this uh, is cosine because it's adjacent to the angle so we're going to have minus weight cosine of theta and these are your sort of general the general set of equations of motion now you might have seen it where you assumed right off the bat from the diagram if i bring it up here that the fuselage reference line and the velocity vector were aligned from the get-go and you assumed that there was just this climb angle and then this little offset from the thrust vector so if we go ahead and do that we're going to have so we're going to say alpha ref, we're going to assume it's zero. That implies that the velocity vector and the FRL are perfectly aligned. We are going to have thrust cosine epsilon minus drag minus weight sine theta. And thrust sine epsilon plus lift minus weight cosine theta. Now, furthermore, you might have seen these or you could have just assumed that epsilon the angle between the fuselage reference line and the thrust vector was insignificant or uh, not there by design so what you did is you simplified this further and you said okay thrust minus drag minus weight sine of theta and we have lift minus weight cosine theta. And let me just write uh, some forces in the x, some forces in the z, some forces in the x, some forces in the z. So these are your, I mean, assuming that these angles which are usually by design like I told you uh, are insignificant we're gonna call these climbing flight equations now further if we assume steady level flight right 
we are going to say that the climb angle is zero and that our acceleration is zero. So writing that we're gonna have zero is equal to thrust minus drag and zero is equal to lift minus weight or thrust is equal to drag and lift is equal to weight. So proceeding uh, mainly uh, at first we're going to be focusing on steady level flight so we're going to make use of these equations here. Uh, as we go forward we might cover uh, the climbing flight equations and sort of uh, different things related to that uh, in terms of uh, how fast you can go, what's the best climb angle, uh, rate of climb, stuff like that. So this concludes the first video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer or address your concerns and I'll see you guys next time.